Hey there, I'm Rebecca Murphy, and I just wanted to talk a little bit more about PubSub. It's a thing that I talked about in my presentation at the jQuery conference in Boston um, earlier in October, and it seemed like a lot of people were pretty interested in it, and there's a little bit of confusion about how we might use it. So I put together a pretty simple little demo that we can take a look at, and it, it looks a lot like this. Um, basically, we're going to enter a search term into the search box, and when we enter a search term, so we can enter a term like cats, when we enter a term into the search box, then we're going to get some results back from YQL, the Yahoo query language. And not a whole lot to it, but we're going to take a look at a couple different ways that we could do this. One that doesn't use PubSub, that's a little bit more of a traditional jQuery way, and one that does use PubSub. So if we take a look at the way that doesn't use PubSub, this is what it might look like. Um, switch over to our index file. We've got a search form uh, with, with an ID and it's got uh, input in it that we can enter our search into. And when we get results back from YQL, uh, the end result is they're going to go into this results unordered list. So here's the script that we might write to do this in a pretty traditional jQuery way. We're going to bind to the submit event of the search form. When that submit happens, we're going to look and get the value that the user has entered. We're going to fire off a <clears throat> JSONP request to YQL to get our search results back. When we get our search results, we're going to take them, we're going to put them into a terribly makeshift template, and uh, then throw them into the results container, that unordered list that we looked at. This is fine. There's nothing the matter with this. Uh, it, it's great if this is all you want to do and this is the beyond and all of your application. But what I want to sort of show you with PubSub is how we might think about this problem a little bit differently. So let's take a look at this here. Go back up and get rid of these comments. Here's how we might do this with PubSub instead. So. First, let's start with the document ready function that, that again we would use to bind the submit event, event to <clears throat> our search form. Again, we're going to bind to the submit event, and when that happens, we'll check and see if the user entered a term. If they didn't, we'll bail. But if they did, instead of firing off that AJAX request, that JSONP request uh, inside of the submit handler, we're just going to announce to the rest of our application that the search has happened. And we're going to leave it up to the rest of our application to decide what that means that that search has happened. It's not really up to the search form, honestly, to care what that means. It's, it's more up to the rest of the application. So here we announce to the search form, to, to the rest of the application that that search has happened. And then up here, we say what we want to do about it. So we say that when that search term happens, we're going to capture the term, and then we're going to get the results for it. When we get the results, again, we're going to publish an announcement to the rest of the application so that the rest of the application can decide what that means that we got this re we got these results. And when, we, when some other part of the application hears that we got the results, then it's going to subscribe to that topic and it's going to do the work of getting those results into the page. So again, if we come over here and look at this, see dogs, it's going to go, it's what's going to happen here is the search form is going to publish the fact that dogs has been searched for. The JSON service, JSONP service is going to go get the data. When it gets the data, it's going to announce that it got the data. And then the search results topic is going to have the chance to actually respond to the fact that it got the data. So that's a really simple example of what, what PubSub might look like. I also just want to flip over quick and look at what the actual PubSub file is. The one that I use is from P Peter Higgins. He's the project lead on the Dojo Toolkit, which has this functionality built in. But if you take a look at the plugin that he has, um, it's it's really dead simple. There's obviously a lot more comments than actual content here. And the actual content of the plugin, I don't know, I say that it's 10 lines. It's probably closer to 15 as far as the actual content of the plugin. But um, it's it's extremely short um, and, and consists mostly of documentation. This is something that you can do with custom events in jQuery if you want to. The reason that I kind of prefer using uh, using this PubSub plugin instead is that it doesn't have any attachment to the DOM. You can see that when we when we publish a function, it just goes and looks up whether there's a 
whether there's a subscription to the function in the cache and if there is then it runs that function that was subscribed to the topic again you can see if we subscribe to a topic it just adds the subscription function to the cache uh, and returns a way that we can unsubscribe from it later. So it's a much more lightweight way of doing things than doing it with custom events, uh, but, but the concepts are the same. You could do it with a custom event bound to the document element just as easily as doing it with, with this uh, generic pub sub plugin. But most importantly, I just want to get across the idea that that what this lets us do is instead of having a big anonymous function attached to the submit uh, event of the search form. What it really lets us do is, is get the responsibility away from the search form as soon as possible and let the rest of our application decide what it means. And where this gets really interesting, excuse me, <laughs> where this gets really interesting is if we want to add a new feature. So let's say that we want to add a feature to our page that shows the searches that a user has done. In the old way of doing this, we might have just added it inside of this anonymous function that's bound to the submit function, bound to the submit event of the search form. And that's fine, but you can imagine that as we add more and more functionality to this submit event, this, this anonymous function is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Maybe we're going to split it out into multiple functions, but it, it can get pretty messy in a hurry. So instead of doing that, what we might do so again, what, we, what we're trying to do here is when a user does enter a term, we want to show that term on the page. So what we might do is add another subscription to the search term topic. So in addition to actually doing the search, when, we, uh, when a user searches for a term, we're also going to, and this is, this is kind of hacky, but we're also going to append a, um, a paragraph sorry, a list item to the searches container that contains that term. Um, this is not like the most exciting functionality, but you could do just about anything here that you might want to do. This is, this is pretty boring, but you could, you could do anything and this could be certainly much more robust uh, of functionality. But the idea here is that it makes it really easy now that we have broadcast the fact that a search term has been searched for, it makes it really easy for us to do other things as a result of that happening. Uh, it, and it makes it really easy for us to keep all those different pieces of functionality separate. So let's take a look at this, see if it works. Let me comment out this old part. And get the new part fired up. So let's come back over to our demo and see if we did it right. Uh, we'll search again for, we'll search for parrots, see what news there is about parrots. We'll click go and now we can see that not only did we get the results back, but we also were able to add the, the search term to our list of searches. So it was really easy for us to add this additional functionality and again we could, we could do kind of all sorts of stuff with this in, inside of this functionality once we had it. We could even make it so that when we click on one of these list items, it broadcasts yet another topic or even the same search term topic. It broadcasts the topic so that so that it triggers the search again. Uh, so lots of interesting things that you can do with PubSub. I just wanted to kind of go over it a little bit more than I was able to do in my jQuery conference presentation. And if this is something interesting to you, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, you can check out Peter Higgins' uh, plugin. It is at figgins42 on GitHub, and then the repo is called Bloody jQuery Plugins. So figgins, P-H-I-G-G-I-N-S 42, Bloody jQuery Plugins on GitHub. Check out PubSub, uh, give it a try, and, and see what you think when you start writing your functionality a little bit more loosely coupled, and I think you'll have fun. Thanks a lot. Bye.